guys, I'm sure coming at you today in Ray Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Another double upload video. We've been double uploading the last few days. Let me know if you guys like it. Is it too much content? Is it too little content? Is it just enough? Is it just right? Anyway, guys, send us some love, some positive vibes your way today, especially if you need them out there. Uh, today, I'm going to go ahead and show the strategy that I used to basically get through all the most difficult content in Raid Shadow Legends. And I mean this specifically about, you know, really challenging dungeon waves on my free-to-play account when I'm trying to get up to dungeon level 25. Uh, maybe I have no difficulties with the boss, but maybe those waves present some difficulties to me. Or more acutely, I'm using this on for Doom Tower waves, right? For Doom Tower floors, when the going gets tough, I switch to this strategy, as well as secret rooms. I'm going to uh, demonstrate this strategy on the secret rooms, and the nice thing is, it's not super gear intensive at all uh, using this strategy, and it's basically stun locking with a shield set. So I'm going to go ahead and go Doom Tower hard here and we're going to go secret room number 12 which is one of the most challenging it is rare magic champions only now again this is not just for secret room 12 it's really for anything that's really challenging getting through any of those waves i mean some really notorious and difficult like more to macabre waves and siffy and rotos waves on doom tower i would use this sort of a strategy on any of those waves ideally you know depending on where you are with you know not just all rare champions right on some of those waves in Doom Tower. But suffice it to say, this is the strategy that I use for all of the rare only secret rooms and there's quite a few of them again it's not always going to be the same champions but what I'm looking out for here is champions with AoEs on the A1, Abyssal, Soulbound Bowyer, and Banshee are three of my favorites. They're not the only ones, but those are three of my faves. We're also looking for champions that have multiple AoE attacks in their kit. You can see that Banshee has an AoE with decreased defense on her A1, another AoE on the A2, and I don't even use the A3 ability. So again, Banshee is campaign farmable. Obviously, Aethel and Elhane are both starting champions. Executioner, I believe, is campaign farmable. He is an AoE. Executioner is really, really solid, guys. He's slow, but he's defense-based. Uh, with some attack scaling, which I hate, but either way. An AoE, decreased term year by 20% and also places decreased speed. That's a really, really strong ability for a rare champion. It's a great control ability. Also has increased defense and counterattack with a stun on the A1, so more control. Control is the name of the game. He also has a great aura defense in all battles by 17%. In all battle defense aura, really hard to come by on a rare champion. That's why I like Executioner. So again, Diabolus, another campaign farmable champion. She's bringing increased speed with an AoE attack here. And then she has, again, control on the a3. So these champions all super accessible. These are my favorite kind of magic champions. But you could use a champion. Another campaign farmable dude is uh, Greybeard, right? So Greybeard has a uh, an AoE freeze in his kit on the A2. I say all this to say that that's what we're looking for, right? We're looking for stun locking. Now, out of these champions, I want to pull up their builds really quickly here first. They don't have like god tier gear or anything like that. It's not about god tier gear in this specific strategy. It's about having one champion in a shield set, right? So it doesn't have to be Aethel. Although I, uh, there's an important strategy that you guys need to watch on Aethel that's going to help inform you uh, anywhere through using Aethel. Aethel, by the way, I mean, you can make a strong case that she's, her in Elhane, are better in the end game, in the mid game, in the end game than Kale. Even though Kale's the best starter still, I think it's, it's, you know, Kale can get you further with those poisons, but I think that Aethel and Elhane are really, really effective in the end to end game, uh, in these secret rooms, like areas like this, right? Much more so than, than Kale, for example. She has a triple hitter with weaken on the A1, which is great against bosses, but that's not what we care about. She has this extra turn ability, but you want to make sure that you're leaning in, not with the A3, you know, normally on an extra turn ability, you come in, increase defense, increase attack, awesome, grant an extra turn, and then nuke them. No, 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 no. We want to nuke them first, then come around with the extra turn, getting the cooldown down of the A2 even more. So she can do this basically on a two-turn cooldown instead of a three, okay? We'll, we'll see that in action in a moment here. Uh, but we have her in a shield set. Doesn't have to be Aethel in a shield set. As a matter of fact, I don't think she's the best candidate for a shield set on this team. It's just what I happen to have built. Now, uh, ideally, we have more HP than just this on her right now, but we do have almost 50k HP. So, heck, we're getting around a 15k or so shield at the start of each turn for three uh, turns. That's really, really effective. Heck, if you have bolster gear, even better, right? A protected shield and the heal as well. Bolster's so freaking good. 
Anyway, I digress. One champion in a shield set. Ideally, it's a champion who has the least AoEs because you really want to take advantage of the AoEs in a stun set. So again, Aethel in a shield set. Other than that, we're not building these champions for a tremendous amount of damage. When it, when, when it comes down to just clearing the, the content, we don't care how fast we're doing it. We just want to stay alive. So building them with a lot of crit rate and a lot of crit damage is a nice to have, but not a mandatory. The biggest is the actual sets that they're wearing. So shield set again on Aethel. We have a stun set on Executioner here. And again, you'll see the build isn't anything crazy. He's actually built to do some damage here, which is nice uh, because we can get away with that because he's, he's built, he scales off defense as we mentioned earlier. So in a stun set, right? We have Aethel in a shield set. We have Elhane in, you guessed it, a sunset. Aethel is amazing in a sunset. She has two strong AoEs. This one attacks all enemies after the first enemy, and this one attacks all enemies two times, both of them on a, or a four and a three turn cooldown. And then we went with Fearsome Presence. This is another really important one, guys. Fearsome Presence is gonna move that chance to land that stun from the uh, from the stun set from an 18 to a 23%. That's actually pretty significant, especially if we have it on multiple champions. Keep in mind too, landing a stun from a stun artifact set requires no accuracy so we're not super concerned either with accuracy on these champions unless they have other debuffs that we're really trying to land so uh diabolist we actually don't have her with a uh, fearsome presence but we should let me see does it cost me gems reset for free ah uh, let's do it guys let's do it let's just go down here actually i don't really <laughs> i wish i could redo that i'd rather go on the uh, on the on the uh, left hand side but it's okay not the end of the world we're just going to come down we're not even going to like think too hard about this we're just going to make sure that we come down and pick up most important importantly excuse me fearsome presence again we will pick up a little bit of uh accuracy because she does have that control on her a3 as well so we'll come down this way we'll go with evil eye to reduce turn meter and then we'll go with a master hex is not going to help her out uh cycle of magic come down pick up Lasting gifts for the increased speed, I suppose. Let's go with, we don't want Selfless Defender. Deterrence is fine as well. Just kind of rounding out these. Uh, we'll pick up Shadow Heal because I love the mastery so much. And there we go. So now we have Fearsome Presence. All is right in the world. Banshee, same thing. Fearsome Presence with a stun set. Again, we're not, we, she has like barely any crit rate, crit damage. Ideally, we would have that. We would have her a little bit faster, but this is just to show you guys again, you know, all the gear is not even upgraded fully here. It's really about just <laughs> stunning, <laughs> essentially, right? Stunning our way through the content. So there you go, guys. Those are all the builds to start things out. Let's go ahead and do this run. So as we come in here, I'm gonna take it off auto. I usually like to go off auto on, on any of these runs. And here we go, two stuns already landed. We're gonna come in with the A2. This is gonna be, again, increased speed, and we land a third stun there. And this is Aethel. We're not leading off with the A3. We're leading off with the A2. So can we get a stun on either of these mobs? We cannot, so it's kind of a bummer. Just gonna go A1 here. So we land that last stun. There's only, so now after we've all gone, they're all stunned except for one. But these rares hit so freaking hard. They're level 295, guys that even one enemy can ruin our run, not being stunned. So now we're just going to keep poking at the one that's not stunned, and eventually we do land that stun. So now everybody is controlled, right? So now we just do some damage, essentially. This is why we don't use Aethel's A3 at first. We're going to use it right now, proc that extra turn that brings this down to a cooldown on the very next turn. So Aethel, I think, is incredible. We went after the wrong mob there. It's not the end of the world here, but we do want to go after whoever gets that stun stripped off them first, okay? So we land another stun there, and again, we have two enemies right now who need to get stunned. We're going to go right in there with the A1 rather than the A3 here uh, and try to stun one of them. Uh, doesn't really matter here. We're going to always kind of target the, uh, the fullest turn meter available, right? So decrease speed, decrease speed. Fantastic to have. We're going to use the positive charge, fill turn meter, deplete turn meter, come in with the divine blades ability again on eight though. We have two not stunned, three not stunned, four not stunned right now. Going to come A1 on Banshee. Stun, 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 stun. Only one not stunned. We're still going to use the AOE of Aethel. Now listen, towards the end of this, you're going to see in a moment, we're actually going to yeah, just let's go right here. Uh, you're going to see that we're going to kind of shift our strategy towards the end of each wave too, right? Again, this is not rocket science, but I get so many requests. I figure having like one video just walking you through a somewhat long, like seven minute run uh, will be good to reference people in the future when they ask me this, right? So again, we're going to come in with a strong heavy hitting to A2. Keep in mind that he's our biggest nuker. 
executioner that is on the team in terms of how we have them built here. So again, we're going to go ahead and get the extra turn and we're going to already have it up again. This is why I said that uh, she's probably not best when it comes to a shield set, right? Because she's so effective with those getting back-to-back -back AoE attacks like that or close to. So ideally, we'd probably have somebody like Executioner or something in the uh, with a little bit more HP in a shield set. But I do like having a shield set because things don't always go perfectly, right? Sometimes you're not going to stun everybody. And sometimes you're going to take an AoE nuke or two. So that shield set can make a big difference, especially at the beginning of the wave. Now, this is the, a pivotal moment in the, the run. Right now, we have this a three turns still on this cooldown of the A2 uh, ability. We want to start when there's only a few mobs left and they're all low on health. We just want to A1 cycle. So it doesn't matter who we're using, what champion we're using. We're just going to only use A1s here. That's it. We want to go into every single round with a fresh cooldown of all of our AoE abilities so we can start stunning them again on the second round. Now, the cool thing about the second round is if we lose one champion on the second round, I, it's not going to, it shouldn't, I should say, ruin the run. Because usually you can get through that third run with only a few champions. So here we go again. Every turn basically that we go, things get a little bit better in terms of the percentages that we're going to pull this off. So we're landing no, only one stun there. That's not good. No stuns there either. Getting some bad luck here, guys. Getting some bad luck. We do land uh, three stuns there. Okay. So that was a big pick me up. We go in with Tumult, that's gonna reduce turn meter. We're gonna go right at Galak here in the middle and we do land that stun, perfect. Everybody's stunned, we're looking good again. We're gonna positive charge, we're gonna divine, uh, higher blessing, excuse me. We're gonna be one turn away from the divine blades. Everybody's magic affinity, so it's not really, and we don't have to worry in this particular dungeon about affinity matchups. Now again, this is, a, even though I'm showing you a Doom Tower secret room for rares, this is the same type of strategy I would use if it was all epics and I could not clear the dungeon otherwise just by brute forcing my way through. I would go after, again, the enemy with the highest turn meter. Right now, nobody's stunned at all, which is bad. Go A2 here. We do land three stuns. We're landing stuns at a really nice clip here, and that's because we have all those fearsome presences really boosting up our chance. We're going to keep attacking the enemies without stuns, with with the with the highest turn meter. Again, we have a Galek and an Elhane. I'm very scared of Elhane. She does a lot of damage. We'll see if any of these uh, two get a shot off against us. It's going to really hurt. We do stun Elhane, which is really good. We have another Elhane, and we have a Galek over here. We come in with Tumult. We don't land stuns on either of them. Uh, I should have went for Galek there. We do put her to sleep. That's nice. We're going to wake her up right now, though. <laughs> We're going to come in with an extra turn. Divine Blades. Hope we can, we can stun Galek, and we can't. Let's poke at Galek in the middle there. We do stun him that time. It's looking great. And, and have we been attacked once, ladies and gentlemen? I don't think we have. Now, I think it's a little bit too early for A1 cycling right now. You never know. That's one thing that you can get yourself into trouble for. Is you, it's easy to say, you know what? Everything's looking great here. You know, let's just put it on auto or whatever, or A1 cycle. You want to really make sure they're close to dead. Now, I feel a lot more confident, right? So now we can just A1, and we're just going to still do the same thing. Go after the enemies that are not stunned, not CC'd, and uh, as we attack one who's stunned and CC'd, but you guys get the point. But that's going to be plenty of time, especially with these mobs that have so much HP. We don't need to sit here for, you know... Uh, we don't need to start the, the A1 cycling super early because they have so much HP. You're seeing it's still taking quite a while to kill them. And all of our cooldowns are going to be nice and fresh going into the third wave. So the third wave here, guys, I probably could just put it on auto at this point. But again, the beauty is, is we've not been attacked once, you know. So we only have one stun up. Not good. Not good. We have two stuns. Three stuns. Okay. And now we have two more. We do land decreased speed, decreased turn meter. Let's go right there. Can we get another one? No, we can't. Let's positive charge. Again, Diabala is such an underrated champion, in my opinion. I really, really like her. We come in A1 again. Let's try to get a stun off here. We don't. However, keep in mind with all those A1s with Evil Eye, we are still reducing their turn meter. We pull off that other stun. We're just going to keep trying on this one mob left. Uh, I don't even know who that is, to be honest with you guys. Who is that champion? <laughs> Eh, it's one of those level 295 champions that kind of sucks, but then wrecks you when, when you face them in one of these secret rooms. 
Uh, here we go. Stun, 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 stun. Now we can put it on auto here because I think this one's pretty much over. And that's how I clear the hardest content in Raid Shadow Legends, guys. So I'll stay with you to the end of this match, but I don't want to belabor the point at the same time. Thank you guys who watched all the way till the end of this video. I feel like it was kind of boring, but again, I did want to show you guys something that's... Uh, that I get a lot of requests for, right? And, and again, this is the strategy that's tried and true, right? It's how you stun lock an enemy team. And if they can't touch you, well, you're gonna win. It's so much easier, this strategy, than going with like provoke sets, where you have to deal with the A1s, uh, or going with lifesteal on everybody, where you have to worry about healing everybody up. It's just so much easier in any content just stunning the heck out of the, the enemy team, right? Just make sure you, you you don't even need enough accuracy unless it's based on their skills where you're landing the debuffs or the stuns. You don't need a lot of nukage. You can get by with even worse gear than I showed you because again, it's all coming from the artifact sets plus that fearsome presence. Guys, thanks so much for watching. And as always, take care, guys.